Peace and welcome to P.O.P. That's picking off punches. It's your boy, Sergio Chacon. I'm with my host, Derek Drescher. What up, daddy What's going on? How we doing? We're doing well. First episode of P.O.P. We're framing it with uh, love and respect to some of our favorite fighters, coaches, and everyone in the boxing business. Boxing figures, if we may. Yes. That have inspired us throughout our lifetime. Mm-hmm. My 41 years on this planet. And you've been in 112 fights. I've been only, in, only three have been in the ring. I've been in 112 fights, only six in the ring, actually. And I have a record. I'm 112 and 0. I've, <laughs> I've won every fight by stab, by stab wound. No. Yo, <laughs> starting off this episode, <laughs> violence. <laughs> so, well, POP, we're going to make sure that we check it up, you know, check you guys out, see how you're doing out there. But we're also going to check in with our guests, but also... Of course, cause, you know, me and uh, Derek are stand-up comics. We're going to add a different flavor to it. Right. Just so you know, mm -hmm. we're not some goop balls. We're going to be having fun with you guys. Keep it lively and vibrant. And let it be known, let it be known that uh, Sergio and I have both uh, had a fight inside of a ring. So we're not just, uh, you know, some uh, armchair warriors or uh, journalists who uh, critique people. We know what it's like to be punched in the face. Sergio still knows what it's like to be punched in the face to this day. And uh, I have a, an extensive wealth of knowledge knowledge when it comes to uh boxing if i may yeah i mean listen you're like an encyclopedia i mean i guess all those years in prison there was nothing else to do but read books <laughs> yo shadow box <laughs> <laughs> got me got me yes yes I, I i have an extensive knowledge especially uh late 90s uh early 2000s yeah and i think that's the reason why we're drawn to a sport that's so gritty Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, it's primal. What was, do you remember what locked you into boxing? What made you go, I love this sport? Not only like, oh, do I, it's not even, you don't even have to do it to still love it. Correct? Right. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. The first time I fell in love with boxing, first of all, the, the Rocky movies got me. Mm. But I do remember vividly watching, uh, I was given a post of, of, of Sugar Ray Leonard mm -hmm. versus... What's Durant? Azuma Nelson. Azuma Nelson. Yeah, and there was like thunderbolts, and it was blue, and they were face to face, and the, the, below them was a ring. And then I ended up watching that fight, and I watched it alone, and I fell in love with it. Really? Yeah. So I think there's three main main factors. My father enjoyed it, so I would watch it with Macho Camacho with him. I um, love the Rocky movies, and also what cemented it was Azuma Nelson and Sugar Ray Leonard fight. I watched it by myself. I was. Probably like I was I wasn't even ten years old and I sat with my my feet crossed and I just I was at awe at the different styles and the movement. It was something that I loved. Right Zuma Nelson was a great fighter. I don't think he gets his justice. With his leopard shorts. Yeah. I uh boxing for me, I grew up in the Tyson craze. I grew up in the Tyson craze and also my father was a big uh Roberto Duran fan. Uh and you know, learning about the Roberto Duran. I mean, all those guys fought each other back in the day. Roberto Duran, uh, Hagler, Leonard, they all fought each other. Hearns, you know what I mean? So It's kind of like the lightweight division as of late. Yeah, I would say that's nothing's ever going to beat that that time when it comes to, to guys from 147 up to 160. I got a controversial sa statement. Go ahead. Uh, Hearns and Hagler, overrated, that fight. Are you out of your mind? It's overrated. It's a street fight. Yeah, so what? Yeah, I've seen street so fights what? on McDougal. I don't need to see it. I don't Listen, need to pay for that. First of all, it, Marvin Hagler took what was given to him. He had that bad cut over his eye, right? And what we learned <laughs> that day is that uh, Kronk fighters don't know how to hold on when they get hurt. <laughs> That's what we learned, unfortunately. And that, is, uh, that, that has continued throughout the years. are slipping all over the Jericho years. juice. Who, who was another one who didn't know how to hold from Kronk? Uh, Vladimir Klitschko. Mm. Mm. Lennox knew, knew how to hold He would throw that right hand And hold on to you Yeah, yeah, Lennox actually did hold very well You're yeah. welcome He had one of the worst fights I've ever seen in my life Against Henry Akinwande They stopped the fight due to, to, due to excessive holding But they were both holding Akinwande even more so But what got me into the boxing Tyson, I remember the first Gaddy fight I saw He fought Gabriel Ruelas Actually, no, the first time I saw him fight He fought Wilson Rodriguez. Wilson Rodriguez, and he, both his eyes were swollen shut. Uh, he couldn't see the punches. The doctor was like, you, this is it. You better make something happen. He went out there, knocked Wilson Rodriguez out one shot. And uh, then the next fight I saw him fight, uh, Gabriel Ruelas, 
which was another fight where he was done, about to get knocked out, and then he ended the fight with an uppercut and then a left hook. Mm. And uh, I was in, and the, in the gym the next day. I was about 13 years old. Yeah. With Latin King beads on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> with someone else's sneakers on. <laughs> Not yours. That's just stole from the pool. You are you were Latin King, too. <laughs> I was not. I was never involved in gang activity. Yeah, I, 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 but today's guest <laughs> may have been involved, may have in, been involved, involved in, in some petty activity. crime. No, I actually... I don't know if she has. I don't know if she has either. We'll, 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 I'll make sure you ask her. She came up rough. Yeah. Uh, Louisiana. She, yeah, born in, born in Texas, Austin, Texas. Came up in Louisiana. Monumental in women's boxing. And wait, 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 wait. brown sugar. Wolf, that's her name. Yeah, mean, 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 mean right hand. One of the greatest knockouts of all time. Yeah. The knockout of Vonda Ward. 24 and one as a pro, I believe, quadruple champion. Uh, Didn't have much of an amateur career. Three and one as an amateur, made yeah, it that, to the that, Nationals. That's a short career, that's like a rapper's career. <laughs> I think she needed money, probably. Yeah. I, that's yeah. what I would imagine. That's what I would imagine. Yeah, but she was fun to watch, man. She uh, she had power in both hands. She uh, was defensively sound. She was very defensively sound. Had had a great jab. Was a great all around boxer and could knock you right into next week. Yeah, and like you had mentioned, uh, four and a great happy. trainer, right? And a great trainer. Look what the work she did with James Kirkland. I think she's a little heavy handed. Training? Yeah. I think, well, I think you a, train. Uh, I think, uh, you train white a... women from uh, the Upper East Side, <laughs> and she trains, you know, men. Men that come from nothing, so. <laughs> you know yeah. what, man? I'm going to borrow some of her training techniques. You should. I'm, you I'm, should. I'm going to put chains around my fighters. My Drive a truck at my, them with a heavy bag <laughs> hang, hanging off My Beckys off it. and Megans and, and make them run up the street. Right. Pulling a, a, my, a, my Fiat. No, they'd be, yeah, they'd be pulling a scooter, a city bike. <laughs> that's what they'd be pulling. While you sit on there eating Doritos. Yeah. That's exactly what I would be doing. I'd be eating Doritos and a burrito. Yep, absolutely. 100%. I... Th she, what, seeing what she did with Kirkland was wonderful. I know they don't work together anymore. They might start working together soon. I guarantee you if he would have stayed with her, he would have won a championship, 100%. Um, yeah, but she was exciting to watch. Doesn't get the just do that I think she de deserves as a fighter. Uh, I mean, that, 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 that famous knockout is highlighted, but I don't know. People will always remember that knockout. People know who sh she is that are boxing fans. Mainstream, nah, she doesn't get her just to. Absolutely not. Probably the best female fighter of all time. Nobody wanted to fight her. Yeah. Nobody wanted to fight her. I wouldn't want to fight her. Yeah, people, they, they would ask uh, other fighters, hey, are you interested in this uh, bout with Ann Wolf? And, and they would be like, no. nah, I gotta hang out with my mom. Yeah. She's not doing well. Yeah. They'll yeah. make excuses. A, a lot of excuses, a lot of excuses. Yeah, without further ado, we got Ann Brown Sugar Wolf in the house. Welcome, man. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. And you, what's going on? Good to see you again. How you doing, Ann? Chill. Ann, where, where are you at? You're not new. Oh, we lost. <laughs> you got our screen looking like a Blair Witch Project. <laughs> Good to see you again. Yeah. How was your stay in New York City the last time we saw you? Oh, it was absolutely wonderful. But you know, I've been back to New York to go to the Hall of Fame afterwards. Ooh. Nice. How was that? It was. It was real nice. That's what's up. I um. Yeah. I mean, there's been so many of those events going on. I can't quite keep up. Yeah. But they're always fun to watch. I know Miguel Cotto, and uh, they were inducted. Who else was inducted recently? I don't know. Uh, uh, you, you know you had the trilogy, so you had Roy Jones. Um, right. Antonio Tarver. Uh, no, Antonio wasn't inducted. Uh, Roy mm. Jones, Wayne Mosley, um, Layla, Ali, uh, Floyd Mayweather. It was several of them. Miguel right. Cotto. Oh, and that was up in Canastota, right? Right. Canastota. Yes. I, I got to mm -hmm. make my way up there. I've never been before. You're, you're already in, right, Ann? I just got in about two weeks ago. Congratulations. Congratulations. I was, I'm, you know, it was a trilogy because of COVID. So there were three years. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yep, yep, yep. That makes a lot of sense. And I want to start from the top. What inspired you to start boxing? I know it was at a late age. You did your amateur boxing career, which was very short. And then you went to the pros. What inspired you be to be a fighter? 
to feed my children. Mm. Because you have to realize, like, I didn't have a high school diploma. The last grade I completed in school was like, the last grade I went to was like six. Maybe I went to the seven a couple of months. My mom passed away 11 months later. My dad passed away. Uh, my brother passed away probably two years later. I was homeless and I was always an athlete. I could dunk a basketball. I could do it. But how are you going to go to college? With mm-hmm. No one knew who I was until I, w- I would be at the rec center. And I would play out with all guys. And then I, I, I mean, being homeless, I had to fight. So I knew how to fight. I didn't know how to box. So I had to fight. And I was just trying to figure out a way where I wouldn't have to leave my children with anyone because I couldn't even afford to for the daycare. So I was in the hospital and I went to the hospital just to sit in the hospital because it was real cold. And I saw two females boxing and I asked the lady next to me, I said, I wonder if they're getting paid for that. And she said, if it's on TV, more than likely they're getting paid for it. Mm. I left that morning and went to one gym. I didn't like it. And then I waited about about eight o'clock. And I waited until Pops got there at the rec center at like six o'clock. And I told him I wanted to box, but I didn't understand how boxing, you know, I thought you just, just throw a punch in and get paid. That's not how it works. So it was, it was no females in the gym. And I said, he said, I only train men. I said, why don't you just train me? As a fighter, we should train fighters, not men or women. It shouldn't matter because they have a penis, they can be a fighter. It matters whether they have the ability and desire to want to fight. And I told him if he trained me, I would never leave him. And from that day until the, until he passed away earlier this year, I never left him. Wow, my condolences. So it took a little convincing pop to, to train you or what was it like just that no, day and he started training you or did, did it take it, a couple of was, weeks no it wasn't I didn't have to convince him because I think he could see the passion in my it wasn't for boxing it was for to take care of my children mm-hmm. it was to feed my children I did not want my children to go through what I went through I had a really good mom and so my mother taught me certain things but my, my dad was in the streets or whatever but it was it was the compassion that I had to take care of my children. That's all I wanted to do. I did not want my children to fall through the cracks. I wanted my children to go to college. I wanted my children to be different. And so it didn't take a lot of convincing, but it did, once I went in, he put me in the ring with a 14 year old kid and the kid kicked the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> when the kid beat the hell out of me, you know, I'm beating grown men in the streets. Yeah. I mean, Really fucking up grown men knocking knocking balls loose and I didn't know a 14 year old and so I picked the kid up and slammed him on the ground and I threw a bunch <laughs> of I told Pops I was like man fuck this and I I left and so you grew you grew frustrated right it's almost like you had the 16 ounce gloves the headgear the yeah. mouth guard but you were shadow boxing because you probably couldn't touch that that 14 year old kid because what people don't realize, the kid had been boxing since he was six years old. Right, I yeah. couldn't, couldn't physically counter or catch or throw a punch. He would slip and dodge and move, and his feet were moving, and I was just winging hard shots, and I I, I, I was tired. Wow. So, But I did get him in the corner and picked him up and slammed him on the... <laughs> <laughs> I pictured a Jake the yeah. Snake DDT. It's like that, bong. I slammed the shit. I slammed his ass for real. So how long were you training before you... Because you had a short amateur career. It was about four fights, right? How how long were you in the gym before you had that, that first amateur fight? About seven, eight months. And okay. I still didn't know how to, per se, box. I didn't right. learn how to box until I started training. So winning eight world titles, four different weight classes. I skipped over weight classes. I was fighting. I wasn't boxing. I was straight up fighting because I had I I had so much power and so much determination. With both to, hands, yeah. I must add. Yeah. Yeah. Both hands. I had determination. I I mean, and I don't know, God blessed me just differently. I'm mentally strong, but I'm physically strong. But physically, if I hit a female, <laughs> she's gonna fall apart. She, she's gonna, I'm gonna knock her the fuck out. I, <laughs> so what makes me 
just like think back if I knew how to box now the way I in the past when mm-hmm. I did box oh I would I would have destroyed every everything they put in front of me I, I destroyed everything they put in front of me I mean and you I, pretty you pretty much did that any, anyway the only woman that ever um the loss you had you ended up beating her twice after that so yeah you, you've... and guess what everyone ha- they no one knows the truth I started out at 150 pounds 100 mm-hmm. I, I went in two years I demolished from 150 to 200 plus God damn. I, I skipped over the only reason I don't have a world title at middleweight is because I skipped over middleweight because when she came in the box the world title fight the bitch came in at 167 Mm-hmm. I wouldn't, I didn't even make 160. So yeah. I skipped over 160, put quarters, pennies, nickels, dimes, drink water, and skipped over 160 to fight at 168. She had, you had the 14 year old in your back pocket like that. We need to make this weight right here. <laughs> yes. People, <laughs> and how difficult it was for me because most boxers are trying to lose weight. I was trying to gain weight. It sounds ridiculous to try to gain weight. Because you never want to fight another fighter and never even give them an ounce. Right, let absolutely. Pounds. I was right. giving up. So when I fought the person I lost, I was 152 pounds, couldn't buy. This female was 168 pounds with 10, 12 fights. My first, in my first three fights, I fought girls that were world champions. They were 15 and two. So I knocked their ass smooth out. Mm-hmm. Because it was something that was different in me versus in them. Right. For me, I was fighting. They were boxing. The the you're I believe you and Henry, Henry Armstrong are the only fighters to ever hold uh, titles in three different weight classes simultaneously. But what they're not realizing, even it Henry, should have been more. It should have been more for you. Should have been more, and that's not. I will go up, defend it. Come down, defend it. Go back around and defend it. That's what they not realizing that once one fifty four, everybody I put my hands on hit that fuck canvas. <laughs> this is true. So, so you, had a, you you ran into a lot of problems uh, where people wouldn't want to fight you. Also, correct? Yes, because but it's gonna sound really crazy because I would be disappointed when I didn't get a fight. But then I would be like, "Bitch, you really won't fight me." Then I'd be pissed off that she would take the fight. And I'll be like, I promise you, you would never want to do it again. <laughs> Did you so, almost feel like the audacity to take yeah. this fight and then you could beat me? But, but I was like, I was challenging. When I challenged Layla, I was 150 pounds soaking mm. wet. She was a, a junior, I mean, a super middleweight. She's 5'11". Mm-hmm. I didn't even give a damn. Then they said, okay, if you're not going to do that, the last fight we have for you, super heavyweight champion of the world. She's 16 and 0, or 18 and 0, 16 KO. I said, tell her to sign the paper. And that, I well, believe that would be Vonda Ward, correct? And, and we I, all know. If I fought, Vonda Ward was one of the only people who disrespected me. How so? so? Because Vonda is 6'6, six, six, I'm 5'9. They wanted me to stand on a crate. And I was like, <sighs> No, I'm not standing on a on a I'm not standing on a crate. I want everyone. They, to, they, they didn't want to showcase the disparity between you. Yeah, oh, I wow. said I want to know that this woman outweighs me by damn near thirty pounds. I had to put on weight to fight her. She was seven inches taller than I was. So I told her. I said, No, I'm not going to get on a crate. She said, Just get on a crate. I said, Fuck you. You been down. <laughs> <laughs> so, her, I was right here at right. I was like right where you could see her breathing. So I, her neck and I saw her just, I mean, I saw her panicking and I looked up and I was like scared. Right. And I had so many females try to tell me to take it easy. Like they try to reach that compassion in me. Like, holy shit, I shouldn't have took this fight. And I, I no, I'm not going to take it easy. I'm well, going to fuck you up tomorrow. She felt the heat. Yeah. So a lot of the, a lot of fights you had. Did you? Uh, could you tell that your opponent, the opponent standing across from you, you could you could feel the fear in them immediately? But a lot of times, what people don't realize when a fighter is afraid, you should be afraid as well because it's a scared 
a scared fighter. Yeah, you hear that in the gym, but you got to yeah. be careful with a scared fighter. Well, people will do things out of fear right. to try to protect themselves. So. For me, I knew if I touch you with this, it didn't matter if you were scared. It didn't matter if you weren't scared. It didn't matter <laughs> what the hell you were. I knew if I touch you with either one of these, either one of my hand, and I knew that I, I would, they just couldn't mentally match my strength. I've never found a female on this planet Earth that can mentally match my strength. Now, uh, well, let's uh, allow me. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, before no. I forget this yeah. thought, I want to be clear to the people that are listening. You know how hard it is to fight someone that much taller to you, yeah. taller than you. Yeah. I mean, so I give you like, like props because fighting someone that much taller, you're you're fighting like uphill. Like right. you're, you know, you yeah. know, it's so much more work right. mentally and it, physically. Yeah, and what they don't realize is I always try to bring in sparring partners that were good. A lot of females will say, okay, I'll spar with a guy. That, that's, 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 that's not true. Right. The average 35-pounder will beat almost any female boxing mm -hmm. male because you mm -hmm. got to realize that 35-pounder has to go through a 1,000 men to become the best. The females, we have to go through maybe 50 women to become the best. So I spar men for real. So I was sparring and I had to make sure that they didn't, they weren't too seasoned and I had to make sure they understood, go ahead and throw, but I need to have enough of defense and enough of pop to keep them off of me. Right. So, and a male punch is a whole total different punch than a female punch, believe me, because I didn't feel both of them. So when I would feel those punches, I ate that shit in the gym. I mm. didn't, I didn't had where I was in, concussed i mean, had a concussion from boxing these males so when i got in there with a fit and i hurt a lot of them and when i so i understood when i got in there i'm gonna touch a female because when i touched anyone in the street male or female once i did learn a little bit about boxing they immediately gonna drop and then it, it didn't have as much to do with my physical it had to do with me mentally i'm not afraid of another human being on this planet point mm. blank mm. kill me Right. You, because, do you remember how you trained for that fight? Yes. I put up, I had a bag on a truck and I told Pops, I said, Pops, this woman is 6'6", is six, six, but her chin is about 6'3". <laughs> so I'm, I put a mark at the 6, I, I measured. I, says, and I said, and when I get to cracking her to the body or touching her, she's going to bend down. So I'm really fighting someone who's 6'6", six, six, six feet tall. Mm. I'm gonna box. I'm gonna box the chin. I'm gonna make you bend down. I'm gonna make you bend over, and I'm gonna come to you. And when mm -hmm. I come, I knew when I knocked her out, it was a dangerous shot because I went in between. If I would have missed, she would she wouldn't been able to, she wouldn't have been able to catch me. But because I had sparred so many men, that bullshit she threw, I seen that shit coming a mile away. Right. Yeah, so you set it up. Yeah, nicely. you set that up beautifully. Yeah, I mean, beautifully. and when you punch, you always like swayed the opposite way. Like I've always like. Uh, admired your defense like you punched and like like swayed yeah. you know like you were defensively sound and you I feel like we don't see that in a lot of like female boxers but with you it was apparent yeah. yes but that's when I had le I started learning how to box then mm, right so I'm gonna set this up that wasn't just a punch that I threw no, that was, you set that you shit set it up. up beautifully if I, I I wanted to come back with the left hook if I would have come back with the left hook, I would kill that. Yeah. <laughs> I was, would have still been rolling down the street. And for I, people that don't know, this is one probably one of the. It's definitely one of the most famous knockouts ever. Yeah, anybody who posts that clip of the knockout goes viral. Absolutely, hundred. Yeah, yeah, it always goes viral. Absolutely. When, when I threw, I knew I didn't have to throw another shot, and I remember I was like, "I got you." I knew I had her. I got her because if you look at the fight, I threw over the top, but I hit her on the shoulder, so I was on the outside. I said, I'm going to have to come in on the inside. And if her right hand beats mine, then so I bent down. That's where her being tall was to my advantage. I bent down and I turned that shot in straight on her chin. Yep. And I, I, I pinpoint because I, I use these little balls and I use these little jack balls to try to pinpoint where I'm going to throw and how my body is going to throw and not wing out. Like most females, they'll wing out on shots or they'll they'll throw shots a certain kind of way. I threw that shot like a dude. Mm. 
I threw that shot like a fighter. Just like I told Pops, I threw like a real fighter. I didn't make a mistake with thought I set her, I set her up. Now, if you go back and watch the fight, I push the jab, I dog pedal with the jab. If I would have dog pedal with the jab and I was fighting a male fighter, he would have countered that. So I was able to get away with certain things because I spar so many men when I got in there with females. That's why this, this when I came back, the, the person that beat me, I came back and fucked her up twice. Why? Because yeah. I went, understood and I studied my craft. And because I was making mistakes, she was more seasoned than I was, way more seasoned. And if yeah, she, had, me, she was more seasoned than you and, and she outweighed you that first fight. Would you still yeah. s say that she was your, you think she was your toughest opponent throughout your career? No. And no. she was uh, making a change, taking steroids, taking shit to become girl penis or whatever the hell she was doing. <laughs> so no, nowhere near my toughest fight. Okay. Nowhere. I, this person, no one knows. Uh, Vianna Williams was the toughest fight I had. And she was seasoned that she was seasoned as well. And I took that fight two fight I lost. I laid on the sofa. I looked at my kids and I was like, it was so devastating because what people don't realize is when you put your world into something, your life into something, your creation into something, and you and someone defeats you. Just because I'm not a millionaire or I'm not this and that in my world, that was devastating. So I was like, I call my manager. I says, I want a title fight immediately. I fought one fight, dust. I mean, knocked out. Then I fought that fight in Hawaii and I didn't, I didn't drop her. I won nine rounds. She won one. Mm -hmm. I was so disappointed. But my manager came and he, he gave me a Lexus. Like, he was a billion out of Waco. But I, I still was like, this is not what I want because right. I was still at 154. And I went home and I said, I have a title. I won a title. I won nine rounds. I really won 10 rounds. One was maybe a draw. I said, fuck that. And I said, I'm going to go back. And I went back and I told my kids, I said, listen, we're going to the gym. You're not going to the basketball game. You're not going to this. You're going to be with me. And I'm going to train until I vomit every day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spar until I bleed every day. I'm going to run until I fall out every day from that junior middleweight to the rest of the junior middleweights, any junior middleweight into that ring. They left out that motherfucker on the stretcher on the floor. Damn. Yeah. So I dropped the passion and, and honesty coming from you. Where, you. where do you think you got that from? Do you, do you think that's something that you cultivated by dealing with so much pain and maybe loss? Because I remember speaking to you uh, b before and you had mentioned something about you know, uh, your brother passing, but your, your inspiration was from your mom. Is, is that where it was from? For me, for me, once my mom passed away, that devastated me to where I didn't care if I died. We didn't have running water in the home. We didn't have heat in our home, but my mother loved us. And my mother, I was different. I was 18. I had, I, I'd stayed with my mom. I didn't know anything different. I didn't, I didn't know anything. All I knew was go to church, come home, and we lived way out in the country. So my little world that didn't have running water and we were so poor, I never, I didn't go to a movie till I had children. Mm -hmm. I was in my 20s before, and now I still don't like theaters. I had never drink the Coke. I had never, then I went to fucking McDonald's or any of that was. I just knew my world. I didn't know anything else. And in my world, it was perfect because my mother was a good parent. So when my mother passed away and I had to go out into the real world, and then my father, he was a, you know, in the streets, the whole nine yards, killing people, selling drugs, whatever. I was like, I don't want no part of none of this shit. So that's when I left. So my brother was murdered here and I came here to kill. I did not give a damn. I was a pure killer. I didn't care about what no one said. But at the end of the day, it was my children because I fucked this dude up and my baby was one years old and my, my other little girl was three. And my one-year-old, my three-year-old took my one-year-old and hid her behind the toilet because they were so afraid. And when I saw that, I looked at that. I was like, I never want, I'm supposed to protect my children. The fear that I, the fear that I seen in them, it, it broke my heart. And I said that my mother wouldn't have ever done that. And that's where I get that. 
I want to take care of my baby is 31. I have a 29 year old. I still live. I take care of them. I, I still cook, clean the whole nine yards because that's what kept me from killing, from going to prison, from being dead. So it was, it was that no matter what, I was like a, like I, I was like a mother animal. Because yeah, like a mama bear, for real. <laughs> they're children better yep. than some human beings. Right. So I understood if that's going to be your saving grace is your children. Mm. Your children is going to be your saving grace. So my children didn't grow up or experience anything that I experienced. They didn't see any of that. They 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 knew the, they didn't go to the high school prom. So when I got up at the Hall of Fame, I thank my children because they allowed me to live my dream. My dream was not to be four-time world champion, eight-time world champion. My dream wasn't to be rich and famous. My dream was to be a good mother to my children. And I did it. And I, I thank them because they sacrificed right along with me. And they stayed the course because the average teenager is an asshole. They don't want to do what they want to do. When <laughs> My children didn't do that because they understood. And they, be, they, they their strength comes from me. I have a 29 year old, never had a boyfriend. She's like, what the fuck? I, I'm good on my own. I'm self sufficient. I'm college educated. Or oh, I want to win. Fuck winning. You want to survive. Because once you win, what, what happens after that? Right. But if you're surviving, you're going to stay the course until you die. Yep. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Because once you, I feel like if uh, people start winning, you know, they you you could become soft almost if you like if you're like oh I'm winning I'm winning I'm winning. That's why I like the sur to be in survival mode myself up here because yes. it'll keep me on my toes. And sometimes world champions are like like shit. The average president or the person in charge, the one who has the most money, they become narcissistic. They think they're better than everyone else. It always you always have to be. That's why the forefathers were so smart. The president has to answer to Congress and and the justice. The justice have to someone. So when you're on top in boxing, you don't have to answer to no damn body. Right. And that's where they make boxing is where you need to be able to answer to someone. If you you shouldn't be able to pick your own fights, or whatever. And then we would have a whole totally different the way that you live life. Right. You have to be able to answer to someone. When you get these football players, basketball, I tell all my fighters, if you never have to answer to no one. You're gonna fucking lose, I promise you. Right. In the long. So right. you're still training fighters as of now, right? No, I'm training actors. I'm training actors. Um, I train some. I mean, training fighters was harder than because you have to get them to trust you, and you have to get them to understand that you have their best interests at heart. And 90 percent of trainers do not have the best interests of the fighter at heart. They have the best interest of their pockets at heart. So I started from the grassroots with children who were six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I didn't just pull in some someone who could fight because I want to make some money. I feel like if a fighter loves the trainer and the trainer loves the fighter and they're both doing it for certain reasons, monetary, yes. But if they're doing it for a difference, that's like James Kirkman. Mm -hmm. He understood I wanted him to win. My children understood I wanted them to be successful in life. Which, by my the way, I, I don't mean to stop you, but I love that relationship between you and James Kirkman. Like, that's, I was reintroduced to you. I knew you as a fighter, but then I didn't know you yeah. were a trainer. So when I saw yeah. you, I was like, oh, shit, that's Ed Wolf training this motherfucker. Yeah. And, man, I, I just, you know, honestly, it was you that, like, really got me going. I liked him as a fighter, but... The you you the way you spoke to him, the way you trained him, it was just so captivating. Yeah, it, it was it was. I had this other kid named Travell Maison. He was like twenty, you no, know, whatever. He 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 died in an accident. But when you, I saw training these kids six years old. And when I walked mm. in the gym, James was like nine, ten, and we were we were we were um, we trained. Pops was our trainer. But then so you, were, I, you you trained side by side. You were like stable mates in the beginning, yeah, and then you oh, and then I, you eventually you started training him. I immediately was a leader when I went to the gym. Any room I walk in, you can tell, because I was like, I think it's a better way to do this. I think this might be because I I started to learn just because you can box don't mean you're gonna always win. Right. But if you're in good condition and you be like, you're gonna have to kill me, mm. and not getting these 
I didn't want I didn't want none of my fighters to have no tomato cans and no bullshit because you go from the amateurs, you are fighting the best of the best, and then you come in and fight them. Fuck it, they don't have two amateur fights. How is that gonna make make you con- continue to make you become better? Right. So that's 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 who I was. I, that's how I learned how to box because when I box as a female, that's the one way to box. But when I'm when I'm moving the chess pieces with males. That's a whole totally different boxing game to take a male to a, a number one ranking mm. because you can make certain mistakes at the lower level of boxing and as female. But when you get to that top 10, there ain't many mistakes you can make and you're going to be on your ass. Right. right. I, I'm, I'm interested. I'm always like interested in like what goes on in the background, like behind, clo- behind closed doors. What was like a training that when you were training, I know you worked your ass off. You know that that shows by your display of work and your and your matches. But when you train James, like, what would what would a day in camp be like? Like from beginning to end, how many bag, how many rounds of bag work? What kind of because you you were also known for your uh your unique conditioning, you right. know, with the truck and the everything. Truck and that's shit that bag, you yeah. did before. Yeah. It's not like something you saw the movie. You did that shit. Like I want to know what a day look like in training camp, like a hard day. A hard day in training camp, you can name every vial. Piss, shit, blood, <laughs> sweat, tears, anything that can come out of your body that's, that's disgusting until I saw it. But they, they they would think that I just would train him like that hard. I would train him real hard. I would train him hard enough to break him down where he wanted to miss camp. Mm. And he would go miss two or three days. But during those two or three days he was missing, guess what he was doing? healing right. and, Recovering, right. and, and had to come back to me knowing what I was going to do to him again. Mm. And when he did, and that ain't all I did. So when I would get my fighters in tip top condition and they're male fighters and they're, they're pro fighters, not my amateurs, my pros, I would take an extension cord and I would make them lay in the ring with no shirt on. And I would hit them across the back with that extension cord. So every fighter I ever train, if you if if they want to tell you I train them, tell them raise up their shirt. And if they have some fucking extension cord marks on it, <laughs> I train them. People say, why did you do that? I said, you could punch someone. If you continue to punch them, you bust their eye socket, break their finger. You needed to feel some pain that you can't feel in the ring. After mm-hmm. I hit them with the extension cord, I'll put them in the shower and turn the hot water on and, and hotter, 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 hotter hot to where you could not stand it because I was mentally teaching them this motherfucker is not under no scalding hot water. Mm-hmm. He's not getting hit with a stension cord. Mm. He's not running, vomiting. You know what I'm saying? He's not doing anything. James in the ring one day, I kicked him in the nuts. I can't. That dude was like, what the fuck are you doing? I was like, man, if you get hit low, what the fuck going to happen then? Right. So, being prepared for everything. I would turn them in a circle, make them know all my fighters. They're like, what? I said, you have to prepare them to lose so they can win. Mm-hmm. You keep telling them, oh, you're going to win, you're going to win, you're going to win, you're going to win. Either he's fighting tomato cans or he's, yeah. you're not getting him prepared to fucking win. Right. That's the thing you, I like it's almost like you take them to a place where it's like so exhausting, so brutal that whatever's in front of them in the ring is like, oh, I've seen it all. Like this shit right, is nothing right, to me right, right here. Right. Right. Fighting sport, 10 rounds a day, every day. The old school fighters fought when 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 uh when um when Sugar Ray Robinson got beat, he was 99 to 1. He was fighting, he came back and whooped this motherfucker ass three times in like three months. Right. Now these fighters are fighting once every two three. months. Man, go back and look, these fighters were fighting every other day. So James sparred 10 rounds every day. He hit the bag 10 rounds every day. He ran out my, uh, James wasn't a, a moving fighter. The other fighter that I had was a moving fighter. Eight eight miles every day in an hour. Mm. Mm. That's a good, that's a, that's a seven minute pace. That's very, how do you feel about the state of boxing today? Do you watch, do you care at all or? I care because it saved me. I'm hurt because we're allowing a few people to kill it. And 
I'm devastated because it truly is a poor man's sport. Who the fuck wants to get hit in the face when they can go to college, when they can throw a ball? But you can be nothing or nobody like I was, homeless. And if you know how to move up the ranks, you can become a world champion, you become a millionaire through boxing. Mm -hmm. Boxing teaches you a different way of life. They should, every, if everyone should at least have a fight. You have people walking around and you never fall, man, someone whoop your ass, <laughs> take the grocery. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you, Ann. Wholeheartedly, I agree with you. Everybody should have a fight. Everybody should know what it's like to get hit in the face. Everyone. What, what, yeah. What's your biggest gripe with, with boxing? Like your biggest turn off? Because obviously you love boxing and you celebrate it and your words, but what would you say is like one thing that's like... Why can't we have one sanctioning body? Mm. You have fucking five. I can go make one hell. Yeah. <laughs> you have no... These fighters are di from a different breed. Some of them don't even know how much they're getting paid. Some of them don't know what they what they have, what they, they need a union in boxing. Right. Number two, they need to be able to be taken care of when they fucking punch drunk. And in, in the end, you were entertained by him getting his ass beat the fuck up, but take now he take care of them. Yep. Why, why, why don't, why is there no medical, no dental, no, you understand what I'm saying? You just that's use it. That's nuts. Yeah. That, 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 that's not a part of it. And the last, last but not least, you can go and get a person off of the street, sanction them through any, sanction them through any state, mm -hmm. and they can get in the fucking box. Yep. See, that's what I did, but they didn't know I was going to start knocking them <laughs> <laughs> And Wolf, I met, I, I, I absolutely adore you and I love I love what you do and what you have done for boxing. You know, you have such an emotional awareness, but also this warrior spirit that in conjunction with one another, it's really special. And I want to know that every time I listen to you or watch you, I'm just captivated. And it's like, it's just a beautiful thing to like witness. So I thank you so much for being on. Yeah. And then it's like, they're gonna, we're going to write the book and that's the same thing they said. Um, Real Sports came to um, to, uh, to the Hall of Fame, I was the only fighter they followed with all these world champions, all these. Why? Why? Because I'm real. Mm, I'm real absolutely. as can be. And I have nothing to hide. I'm, that's what fans like. That's what people like. Nowadays, ain't, there's no one telling the fucking truth anymore. And I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. I mean, the authenticity that you provide, everything, every Absolutely. other fighter, I don't see a development in their personality. I see them like this, with money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with money or just like, they're trying to showcase a lifestyle of another entertainer and a different g genre of entertaining. You're not yeah. a rapper. You know, like, it just feels like that, you right. know? And I guess I got to go through the weeds a little bit and there are some interesting stories, but for the most part, I think you're cut from a claw that, that not many are. Come there's from. no, there's no other man or woman that's ever boxed as close to who Ann Wolf is. I don't think we'll ever see another. So applaud yeah, that. Yeah. Thank you. And Wolf, thank you so much for your time. The next time you're in New York City, I hope to um to see you. Maybe you could come to a comedy show that me and Derek are on. It'll be on. It'll it'll be on us. All you have to do is come through and enjoy yourself. It'll be our pleasure to entertain you the way you entertained us for years. Yes, thank you. And I don't do a lot of interviews. I don't do a lot of part. I don't do a lot of any of that shit. They're coming and said, wear your belts. So I said all eight of those joints are in the, in the, in the storage unit or wherever, whatever. But the, the way, the reason I like this particular show is because you, you can, you are allowed to be who you are. Mm. So don't tell me what to say and how to say it or, Oh, let me see if she's going to say something crazy or whatever, whatever. It's just the realness that you get that you want to receive back and that you want your listeners to hear, hear some real live shit. Yeah. Fuck, we got uh, that. We got the, uh, <laughs> the, the certified approval. Oh, yes, from, from Ann Wolf. Wolf. Fuck yeah. Thank That's you still so much. We closing this bad boy out. You made my day. And take yeah. care. Bye. 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 Wow. I mean, absolutely adore Ann Wolf. I love Ann Wolf. No, okay, guy. Okay. Every time I speak to her, I feel more fulfilled. I feel more filled, like spiritually. Bro. I feel like the fighter is ignited again. Yo, I'm going on stage tonight, and I'm going in different. And 
I'm gonna, yo, I'm gonna. I just say, I love the no bullshit. And what got you into boxing? It wasn't, wasn't, oh, I saw a video of Muhammad (laughs) Ali. My children, I needed to feed my children. I was homeless. My mother died. My my brother, my father died. Education. My brother died. She sixth grade it. education. Yes, she owns I mean, she's it. A, she's an absolute beautiful and she's person. Sixth grade education. She's smarter than half these bozos That's out here I'm that have been in college. Yeah, I mean all. Yeah, I mean I yeah. learned nothing. I can learn nothing from a lot of these goofballs out here. If I, this if this table wasn't so heavy, I will flip it over. I'm so hyped. Yeah, I'm hyped up. <laughs> but it's I'm hyped so up. I'm ready. To, heavy. I'm ready. To... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so. Yo, the stamp of approval from Ann Wolf. Yeah, yeah. And we don't have any money, so don't think we paid her. No, we ain't <laughs> got shit. We're, we're broke. Well, the show is broke. Sergio has money. But what, <laughs> this is our first one. This is our first one. So you got to understand that this is a way to kick off something that's dear to our hearts. We absolutely love boxing. We love the people who are, you know, these 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 figures in boxing. I want to talk to Ann Wolf again. Yeah, I want to hang out with Ann Wolf. Yeah. I want to be adopted by Ann Wolf. I would love to see if we could get, do you think we could make her laugh if she came to short? Yes, yeah, like, we may, we, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I can, I can make her laugh. I can make her laugh. Yeah, you can make her laugh. You think so? You think when I did 26 and 4, she would laugh? I think she would absolutely uh, 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 <laughs> love to attend the show, just as long as it's me and you on the show, not none of your bozo friends. Oh, I'm fine with that. Me and you do a half hour, split it up. <laughs> Yo, so that's our show. As you see, we frame... A, a, you know, a boxer, a, a coach that we enjoy from, you know, the, from boxing, and we uh, and, and we want to get into their life. Right. And, the show you know, is all about whoever it is we're talking to. Right. And that's we want to celebrate about. them because right. um, it's a part of history that's very important to us, and we just want to share it with you guys. And without further ado, it's I'm your boy Serge Chacon, my man Derek Drescher, and we out one and done. <laughs>